Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. And in the last episode, guys, Thomasina was finally able to meet the elusive Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Um, we had a chat on the bench that was dedicated to Arthur Tillett's mother, and we didn't get a whole lot of information from Leonard, not that we didn't already know, other than he confirmed that Thomasina's father was one of the men to um, excavate Hobbs Barrow, and probably led to his current ailments. So we are back here at uh, Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there in the distance, but uh, we're going to have a talk with uh, Mr. Bryden and see if he can uh, give us any more information. Maybe we can try and convince him to be a little bit more forthcoming. Good day, Mr. Bryden. Miss, I... I'll stop you there. I know what you're going to ask. No, I haven't changed my mind. There'll be no digging here, lass. Mr. Bryden, allow me to explain. There has been an astonishing development this morning. Yes? My father was with your brother during the excavation. Oh. Yes. Can you believe it? I had no idea he had been here. The answer's still no, lass. I saw what happened to poor Samuel. I won't risk the same happening to anyone else. But... That's enough now. You can feast your eyes on that hovel to your heart's content, but there'll be no digging. Hmm. He's doing well to be maintaining all this land at his advanced stage. No questions. I'm not interested. But... Off with you. Can we actually go inside his house? Mr. Bryden is right there. Fair enough. And, uh, we need some animal hair. What a, what a wild looking thing. Would you like a worm, Mr. Goat? I should leave the goat alone. Should we? Should we really? Because we got the fiddle bow right here. Goat hair is much too coarse to be used for bowstring. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Well, looks like, uh... Nothing for Black Philip right now. Fix the fiddle bow, explore Bewley and the surrounding area. Um, now would probably be a good time to return back to the town square. Well, hold on a sec. Let's head to the barrow. And leave no stone unturned. A.R. I can't see how that will help me. Okay, I'm just curious. It's the barrow itself that I'm more interested in excavating. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Is there anything else around it? We didn't go... Nope. That's pretty much that. All right, well, let's head back to the town center, see if Market Day has finally uh, finished setting up. And I know we do have fast travel, but I don't want to use that just in case something is along the road. I'm getting that vibe that just we could have some random encounters. Okay. Nope, you are still setting stuff up. Hmm. Maybe some horsehair? Good day. Hey, yo. I met a girl at the Devil's Toe. She gave me this broken fiddle bow. Ah. Well, you've experienced the local folklore firsthand, then, lass. Hmm. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? Never heard of it. What is it? Hmm. Never mind. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. It's like I haven't seen any other animals other than Black Phillip, so... Oh! Okay, Leonard's hanging out here. 
You found old Leonard, I see. Yes, finally. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? No, I can't say it does. Hmm, goodbye. See you soon. He appears to be lost in deep thought. Kind of has an Adam Driver vibe to him. Or a Benedict Cumberbatch. Hello there. Yes. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ted. Ted Cross. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Are you a local, Mr. Cross? Oh, no. I'm just passing through. I'm a musician. Just myself, me guitar and me horse. Ooh. Are you a travelling musician? Aye. I've been playing a new song tonight. I've just finished the lyrics. What's it about? You'll have to come listen. So I assume the horse is probably tied up in the alley. What do you make of Bewley? Can't say that I know much about this place. I don't usually travel this far south. I see. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have, miss. What is it? Never mind. Thank you for your time. Make sure you watch my performance later, won't you? I'll try. I don't need to use the filthy lavatories. Okay. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bearman. I was about to say, I was like, don't you dare suddenly forget that we talked. I've still not been able to gain permission to excavate from Mr. Bryden. Is that so? Perhaps you could show him something that might change his mind. Oh, good call. What else can you tell me about this Saxnot? Try not to worry yourself too much with these old stories. Leave those to the locals, Miss Bateman. Have others spoken of goblins appearing in their dreams? A dream is a dream, that is all. They merely make for good stories. I know, I know. But to answer your question, no, not to my knowledge. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sure the locals have filled you in already, lass. You cut quite the mysterious figure. Most had little to say. It's true. I do tend to keep me head down. When one gets to my age, one grows very comfortable in one's home. I like the isolation of the moors. I wouldn't change it for anything. I take it you don't get many visitors? Oh, no. Nobody bothers me. That's the perk of living so far out, huh? Just me and me hens. I used to come into Bewley more often, back before me health went to buggery. You need to compliment him on his chickens. What do you think of Bewley? Whilst one could consider the villagers to be rather unenlightened, this place has its charm. The market's in town today. You can see that folk want for now, here. Oh man, we're getting a lot of information from Leonard. Is there anything else I should know about Hobbs Barrow, Mr. Shoulder? No, lass. I'm certain we will know a lot more about it by this time tomorrow. I hope so. What else can you tell me about the previous excavation? I think I covered it earlier, Miss Bateman. As you yourself said, it were a time of superstitious hysteria. What was it like, living in that period of hysteria? I kept to myself. It didn't really affect me. My hens stayed healthy and their eggs kept me well fed. If one can keep a level head in such situations, one can get by. Indeed. Is there anything else I should be aware of before my own excavation? No other ghouls I should be worried about? Ah, you know the answer to that. The corruption in that soil were all in the minds of men. What do you make of Lord Panswick? His lordship is an important man in Bewley, as I'm sure you have gathered. His family has commanded much respect here for many generations. Do you respect him as a leader? I do. He wants the best for the village. Without his influence, the railway line would have never come through here. Does he want more visitors? Aye, I believe so. He has great ambitions for Bewley and wants to share them with the world. He wants some fresh sacrifices for his church. What do you make of Mildred Walker? Who? I believe she's also known as Mother Mildred. Oh, we used to get about when we were children. 
Our paths have not crossed in a long while. What do you think of Charles Bryden? He is a decent man. It must have been hard for him after that terrible business with his brother. Without a doubt. I must say I had assumed you had at least spoken to him about my visit. Sorry, lass. I had no intention of giving you the runaround. Again, I can only apologize. If you don't mind me asking, what is the nature of your ongoing illness? Oh, just the ravages of age. Getting off this bench will be a small battle in itself. Something you won't need to worry about for many a year, Miss Bateman. Growing old is a blessing and a curse. And what of your recent fever? An ordeal, it were. So much tossing and turning. But I'm right as rain now, especially after a mug of ale. Don't worry about me. The dreaded natural causes. What are Lord Panswick's plans for Bewley? He's rebuilding an old chapel on his estate. He seeks to bring God back to these lands. But what of St. Edmunds? I think Father Roach might argue God has never left. Indeed. Let's leave such arguments to them, shall we? All right. Thank you for your time. Hi, Miss Bateman. We will speak more later. So let's go ahead and check the alleyway. And if we kind of strike out there, oh, there is fresh excrement. Then we will uh, go talk to the farmer again. Fresh and steamy. Delightful. I believe a horse to be the culprit. And when there's a horse, there is horse hair. And we have a knife to cut it. Hello there. Please do not kick me. A fine specimen. She's well looked after. Okay. It's Herbert, the local stray. Hitching post. Hmm. Horse hair would make fine bowstring. <laughs> She almost took my head off. Okay, fortunately she didn't. Did we get the horse hair? Oh, no, we didn't. Um. So what do we do? Maybe we need to grab something at the market, but it's not open yet. That's probably it. Yeah, see, there's produce. That's what I'm going. To, that's what I'm going to assume for right now. Um, let me head check St. Edmunds real quick. Nada. And we. Oh wait, 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 wait. What about those plants that we saw? My, my assumption is that horses would eat fruit, but we also have this shrub. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. Hmm. No, that won't work. That, that, that will work. Come on now. No, that's not it. All right, fine. Just looking for just something to distract. Maybe Mother Mildred has something that we can give to the horse, but... Let's head back to the farm and show some stuff off. See what happens. You can see the borrow there in the distance as well. All right. Look, Mr. Bryden, my father's journal. It confirms he was with your brother during the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ha! Take that away from me. I'll be having none of that. Hmm. Lantern, we got our room key. Maybe the letters? I've already shown him the letter. Okay. What do you make of this stone, Mr. Bryden? It was strapped to my father's journal. Wait a minute. Let me see that. 
By God. Wait here a moment. I need to get something from inside. His shotgun. I waited for what felt like an age. I now realize that Mr. Bryden must have been in a great debate with himself, wondering whether or not to share his own piece of the mystery with me. The goat stared at me, seemingly in pity, as I stood there in that rolling fog. Finally, Mr. Bryden emerged. Now then, as far as I know, what I have here is the only thing that Samuel brought back from Barra. Take a look. Two snakes. Incredible! A pair! That's been in my drawer ever since Samuel passed. I suppose it might be important, so I kept it safe. Fate is clearly playing a part in your arrival, lass. Please, Mr. Bryden, allow me to excavate Hobbs Barrow, a place that is no more than dirt and stone. <sighs> You're not gonna give up, are you, lass? I'm not. Samuel managed to say one thing about those men that helped him. I think it's time I tell you. Yes? He stuttered out that one of those fellows could barely walk after they got out of there. Tongue-tied too, the man were. My father. You what? My father. He had an accident around 25 years ago that left him bedbound and unable to talk. Aye. Could be him. My mother told me it happened in a horse riding accident. Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. Something unnatural occurred. I know it. Mr. Bryden, we must rely on our rational faculties to explain any- Promise me you'll be careful. Any sign of trouble, leave without hesitation and we board that accursed place up again. Understood? Wait, you're giving me permission to excavate? <sighs> Aye, against me better judgement. I don't have the energy to stop you, lass. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Don't make me regret my decision. Take Samuel's stone. Are you sure? Aye. Give it back to me when you're finished, though. I promise. Thank you. I'll be sure to show you my discoveries, Mr. Bryden. I'd rather you don't. Yeah. Now then, I've got things to get on with. I don't suppose you can spare any labour to help me with the dig? Don't push your luck, lass. Market's on today. Plenty of able-bodied men about. ta -ra now. Permission like granted. That. I finally had permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. As exciting as that was, I was distracted by what Mr. Bryden said of his brother's associate. There was no doubt in my mind that father was the stricken man he spoke of. You told me he was crippled after coming off his horse. Why did you lie to me? To protect me, to stop me from following in his footsteps. You failed. And so did Charles Bryden. He should have said no. He should have never given me that stone. This is reading like a confession. Okay. Well. Let's uh, go ahead and keep on keeping on. Maybe market day has finally arrived. Oh, wow. All right, and then suddenly people. Morton Pies! Good day. Hey, up. What do you make of these stones? Don't look like out to me. Thanks for your time. Hi. Speak to you later. Now, this is Lord Penswick's, like, maid. Miss Tompkins looks more anxious every time I see her. Hello, Miss Tompkins. Hello. We weren't introduced earlier. My name is Thomasina. Ma'am? How do you fare, Miss Tompkins? I'm waiting for Mr. Ambrose. Have you seen him? Who's that? The milkman. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. You are in the employ of Lord Panswick? Aye. He employs half a bullion one way or another. I'm in need of some help for my excavation. Do you think his lordship could lend me some of his labourers? Maybe. Might you introduce me to him? Sorry, ma'am, but his lordship doesn't take visitors. Any road, I must wait here for Mr. Ambrose. 
Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. Oh, yeah, we can get the uh, tree chopping lads. If Mr. Ambrose doesn't turn up and I find you some milk, would you be able to introduce me to Lord Panswick? Hmm. His lordship really doesn't like visitors, ma'am. I'll take the risk. Miss Fenchurch will be cross with me. But she'll be even crosser if I come back without fresh milk. So do we have a deal? Aye. Bring me some milk and I'll take you to his lordship. Thank you. But hopefully Mr. Ambrose will arrive soon. Okay, gonna s Black, Black Philip is going to get milked. Have you been waiting long for Mr. Ambrose? Aye, he should have been here a good two hour ago. He's here every market day, you see. He sells only the freshest milk. Miss Fenchurch swears by it. I hope Miss Fortune hasn't befallen him on his way here. I'm sure he will turn up. Oh, I hope so. Are you familiar with Hobbs Barrow? What's that? Never mind. What do you make of these stones? Oh, gives me the creeps. Why? Dunno. Just a feeling. Who is Miss Fenchurch? His lordship's housekeeper. I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk. Thank you, ma'am. But tell me if you see Mr. Ambrose, won't you? I will. Ooh, the pie seller. He's selling an assortment of greasy meat pies and scotch eggs. Oh, give me some of those scotch eggs. Can I interest you in a pie? Finest mutton in all the county. Two pence each. No, thank you. You're missing out. Yeah, we are. We are very mi much missing out. Produce. Apple seller. There we go. A jolly looking fellow. He'd make a fine snake oil salesman. Good day. Freshly picked apples, miss. Would you like to try one on the house like? Uh, ye yes, please. Mm -hmm. Here you are, miss. The apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. Ugh. Okay, so not Granny Smith style. Good day. How did you like your apple? I'm afraid it is rather rotten, sir. Hey up, that slander that is. Don't you be going around telling folk I'm handing out rotten apples. Ah, who are you? Oh crap. And you disappeared. Maybe that's just for flavor. The apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. All right, well... Sacks of apples and cabbages. They've all seen better days. My cabbages! Various chards and beets. A decent selection of cuts and sausages. She is selling various herbs. Some familiar looking, some not. Tins of corned beef. Ghastly. <laughs> Wave of the future. The box is full of various sprouts and onions. Nothing particularly tempting. She looks rather grumpy. Good day. Fresh produce! What have you got for sale? I'm selling meat, vegetables and all sorts of herbs and things. You're welcome to have a gander. I'll be sure to browse. Do you have any milk for sale? Not today, sorry. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. Not tempting. Okay. She is selling various herbs. I'm not hungry. The box is full of various tins of corn. Alright, I'd right-clicked on all of those before. I don't want to give the rotten apple to the horse. I'm afraid that, like, something bad will happen to the horse. Like, can we have a regular apple? Stanley, look at the state of this. Wait, sugar... Oh, hello there. Now that will get a horse's attention more than a nasty apple will. So let's see. Here you go. Eat this. Good. 
Good girl. Hopefully that's gained some trust between us. Here's hoping. I've managed to cut off a few lengthy strands. Huzzah! Alright, horse hair with the fiddle bow. I must coat the hair with something waxy first, otherwise the string will have no friction. Resin? Apparently a long, drawn-out process. There we are. This should make sufficient bowstring now. And bowstring... with the fiddle bow. I've done it. The bowstring seems to hold on sufficiently. We're gonna call that the fade-out of progress. Anything else going on here? The horse has been provided with some drinking water. Alrighty. Herbert, we'll leave you to it. So we could go ahead and talk to... Well, I don't know, maybe we need to give the goat... Fresh the... scotch eggs! Oh, stop tempting me. You know, maybe we need to give Black Philip the apple. Goats can eat anything. Let's hope everything's decent over here. Hey girl, would you like an apple? The grumpy thing isn't interested. I mean, I can't say that I blame him. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. Or her, actually. I should ask Mr. Bryden for permission before attempting to milk his goat. <laughs> Good call. Hopefully he is still among us. What do you want? Do you have any fresh milk going spare? <laughs> if you can get any milk out of old Eunice, you're welcome to it. Eunice? Me goat. Good luck. Okay. Black Philip has officially become Eunice. We need to, uh, wash this thing. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. We'll wash it out in the stream. I should try my hand at milking the goat. Be brave, Thomasina. Oh, we're stuck here now. Great. Nothing, nothing but good can come of this. All right, we are doing this. Yeah. I knew that was... I knew that's where he hung himself. Close your eyes, pretend it's a dream. And we're back. I... I... I'm not sure what that was. I don't know what's happening to me. All this superstitious nonsense must be getting to my head. That must be it. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. Okay, well, I think this is a good place to go ahead and end it, guys. Um, when we get back, we will attempt to uh, milk poor Eunice here. I really wish that we could um, wash the pail, but I don't think we're going to have that opportunity. And maybe we'll have an audience with uh, Lord Penswick. We've got a lot of different ways this could go. But I hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.